Hey there guys and welcome back to Kingdom Hearts Final Mix. On the last episode we finished our leveling up in, on Destiny Islands. And we defeated the boss Dark Side. So we got to level 13 which is really high for just entering Traverse Town. And um, we bought a couple accessories. Now if you're wondering how we had enough money to afford these right as soon as we got here. We gathered the pretty stones from racing Riku back on Destiny Islands. So if you're wondering how we got these accessories, that's how you can get pretty stones from Destiny Island. Each or a hundred money. So yeah. We just stepped foot into Trap Town, went and bought a couple accessories. And I saved all the exploring for this episode. So we're going to get a bunch of good stuff, um, including postcards. Alright, so, <clears throat> inside the accessory shop, you can see that there is a chest up on uh, the top of the counter. So first you're going to want to jump onto this green thing and then jump higher up. Press triangle to open up the chest for a mythical shard. Drop down and head out of the uh, accessory shop. Now if you come down here and turn to the left, you'll see that there is something you can mail. Press triangle to examine it and it'll say mailbox. Send 10 postcards to send 10 postcards to win something. Good luck. So scattered throughout Traverse Town there are 10 different postcards and each time we bring a new postcard here and mail it, we're going to get a new item. And some of the items are very useful. So first of all, head over here and enter the front of the item shop we're gonna get our first postcard if you jump on top of the counter next to where you can buy items and press R1 you'll lock on press the press L2 to switch your locked on targets and eventually you will target the ceiling fan which you can barely see once you're locked onto the ceiling fan, hold down circle to jump as high as you can and press X to strike it with your keyblade. If you do it, let's push card number one. Let's go ahead and head out and then head over to the mailbox so that we can mail this postcard. Each time you get a new postcard, you're going to want to mail it to get a new item. So we sent the first postcard to came to Cottage. Now what cottages are, are there items that you can use from the menu or at a save point. And it f or not at a save point, you can use it from, from the menu. You can only use it from the menu, meaning you cannot use it in battle. But it fully restores the party's HP and MP. Kind of like a tent from Final Fantasy. Alright, so now that we got that, go ahead and head up the stairs to the right of the accessory shop. And if you head to the far corner and look onto the roof of the accessory shop from right here, you'll see that there's a chest up there. But it's too high for us to get by jumping. So, grab this big crate here and push it all the way to the corner of the accessory shop building. So push it all the way over here, then jump on top of it and jump even higher and you should just barely be able to grab the roof. 
pull yourself up and head over to the chest and open it up for the second postcard. Alright, now jump back down and go ahead and mail this one. And for this we obtain a mythical shard. first district for now, head back up the accessory stop shop stairs and directly behind it is another shop that we can't enter yet because it's currently closed off. If you talk to the Moodle, Moogle, he'll say this is the item workshop, Koopo, we're researching item synthesis and super weapon for forging. So I bet you'll know what that is, it's the synthesis shop, but it's not open now until later in the game. So for now, head through the double doors into the second district. to re-equip treasure magnet um but yeah you might notice after you kill the heartless in this area instead of just drop dropping green hp balls they drop yellow hp looking balls but these things aren't hp balls instead the yellow balls that you see that come out of enemies when you destroy them is none other none other than money so this is how you're going to be gathering money from now on each enemy in the game drops some money as well as HP and MP balls. So now we can get money simply by destroying enemies. If you have the treasure magnet ability, I highly suggest to equip it now because it attracts nearby HP, MP balls, money, and items. Equip two to attract them from further away. Now we don't have the second treasure magnet ability yet, but equipping one should suffice for right now. Okay, so there's a bunch of items that we can get in this area. As you can see to our immediate right, there is a chest up on the awning. Now before we start exploring this area, let's qu quickly run around and take out the enemies. So as you can see, Treasure Magnet is a great ability. That way you don't have to constantly run around and pick up the money. Alright, so head down the steps and clear out all the enemies down here. After clearing them up, use the benches here to jump up onto the ledge. Go ahead and dispose of the enemies here, that way we can search the second district without being interrupted by enemies. 
Alright, and that should just about take care of them all. Alright, so let's head back to the beginning of the area where we saw that chest. Alright, so if you jump on top of this corner of this uh, light post right here, you should just barely be able to land on it. From here you can turn and jump to the awning and open up the chest to obtain a postcard. Now that we got that postcard, let's go ahead and head back to the first district and mail it. Here you'll find more Heartless. Alright, so let's go ahead and return that postcard. Also, you might want to fight all the enemies you see for not only money but experience. Go ahead and mail the third postcard to get a Mega Potion, which is a very handy healing potion. Now head back to the second district. We got some more items we gotta get. left the area, we're going to have to take care of the enemies again, but that's alright because the more you fight, the more experience you get. That's one thing you need to get used to, fighting enemies, because if you never fight enemies and you simply run past them, you're never going to level up. And right now we need all the levels we can get. Alright, after clearing out the enemies um, in the wide open area, if you jump up to the low roof with the red windows, orange windows, and look to the left, you'll see that there is a church-like house with the uh, blue stained glass. So if you look to the left of that, you'll see that there's a chest up on the ledge. Now this is kind of tricky to get. So first you're going to want to jump up on this low roof here, and then you're going to want to run and jump and grab this thing and pull yourself up. Now the chest is directly to the left, so what you're going to want to do is run and jump and hold the left analog stick to the right, that way you can grab the ledge that the chest is on. Or you can just jump onto it. Go ahead and open up this chest here for a mega potion. Alright, so that takes care of the chest in this area. Now go ahead and head down the last hallway where we're at now and enter the door to the left which is the Dalmatian's house. You'll see that you just missed Donald and Goofy who's looking for Leon. Inside the Dalmatian 
Dalmatian's house, you'll learn that the 99 puppies were lost amid the chaos of their world's destruction. Find them in various different worlds. So throughout the game, we're going to be looking for Dalmatians, which are trapped in treasure chests, and they are scattered all throughout different worlds. So if you collect them all, you're going to get some very good stuff. <clears throat> so don't worry, I'll be showing you where to find all of the Dalmatian treasure chests. And by the way, if you play Kingdom Hearts, the original Kingdom Hearts, back on PlayStation 2, and you found all the Dalmatians, you'll be pretty disappointed to find out that the Dalmatian chests have moved to different spots in Kingdom Hearts Final Mix. So they won't be where you remember them. But don't fear, I know where they're at, and I'll be showing you guys. Also, for every 10 Dalmatians you find, you can come back here and you'll get a reward from uh, Pongo and Perita, which are the two adult Dalmatians. So from the Dalmatian's house, if you head through the door into the lighting room, continue going to the dining room, and continue going to the Dalmatian's den, and then exit the final room to the alleyway. Now there's two different ways to enter the alleyway. One is from the second district where we just came from, and the other is through the Dalmatian's house. So remember the shortcuts to get into the alleyway. In the alleyway, let's go ahead and uh, search this place. First, let's take out all the enemies and get them out of the way. Make your way to the opposite end of the alleyway. At the other end of the alleyway, you'll see that there are some crates that block the path. And if you look in between, you can barely see that there's a chest behind there. Don't worry about this chest for now because we're unable to reach it, but we'll come back for it later. Just remember the location. If you look to the left though, you'll see that there is a chest in the corner we can open. And this contains a potion. Clear out the enemies and get that chest. Go ahead and head back to the other end of the alleyway and jump on this low roof here. To pull yourself up, and if you jump even higher, you can be on some balconies on the outside of the hotel. Jump to the far left balcony to find a chest you can open up for another potion, and then jump all the way to the right on top of the balconies. And at the end of the last balcony, if you turn your uh, camera, by the way, if you guys are playing with the camera set to auto, I would highly suggest to switch it to manual. That way you can get better camera angles and you can spot hard to see chests such as this one. So if you turn your uh, camera angle to face the outside edge of the balcony, you'll see that there's a chest on the other side. Easily jump over. By the way, another pro tip, you can control your jump height by holding down circle. If you fully hold down the circle button, you'll jump at Sora's highest. 
if you slightly tap the circle button, you'll jump low. So do a low jump and pull yourself up onto the ledge with the chest. Go ahead and open up this chest to get a pretty stone, which we can sell for 100 money. It's kind of a tricky jump to land on this ledge, but once you get used to it, it's not too bad. Alright, so go ahead and jump down to the bottom and enter the second district which can be found on the other side of the alleyway, the opposite side we entered from the Dalmatian's house. This is the other entrance to the alleyway. So as you can see, we return to the second district and now you know where the door is that leads to the alleyway it's just next to the fountain here so remember that because we're gonna have to be going back to the alleyway numerous times throughout the game so remember you can access the alleyway from the Dalmatians house or from the door here in the second district by the fountain Alright, so for now, go ahead and head back up to the, uh, if you want, you can clear out the Heartless over here for some extra experience and money. You should really get used to fighting these enemies over and over and over again. It might get dull sometimes, but you can never get enough money and experience. Alright, so go ahead and head back up the steps towards the beginning of the second district and this time this time you're gonna want to enter the hotel which is to the left by the way, there's going to be a pretty tough boss fight coming up. So if you guys did not grind out in on the Destiny Islands like I did and reach level 13, you should definitely spend some time here in Traverse Town leveling up your levels. I would highly suggest to get to at least level 10 or 11. If you can, try to get to level 14. Level 14 would be a, considered a high level and level 10 would be considered the average level. Anything lower is considered a low level. So there is going to be a pretty tough fight coming up. Just preparing you guys. Go ahead and enter the hotel. Inside the hotel, um, all of the doors leading to the left are currently closed off, but they will open up soon. So go ahead and exit the other end of the hotel. want you can jump down quickly and take care of these enemies oh but they didn't respawn all right so now you're going to want to enter the double doors at the end of the hallway which leads to the gizmo shop inside the gizmo shop you're going to fight a lot of enemies they just keep on coming in. At first you're going to think they're never ending, but they are ending. You just have to clear a couple waves of them. Now this is probably the best spot in Traverse Town to level up because there's a good amount of enemies in here. And they can respawn simply by heading back to the first district where the accessory shop and item shop is. And then come back here and they will all be respawned. So this is probably the best spot to level up in Traverse Town if you are at a low level. 
and you didn't level up earlier, I would highly suggest to spend some good time in this room and get up to about level 12 or 13 at least. So as you can see there's a pretty good amount of uh, enemies in here making this a great spot to level up. Go ahead and head through the door at the back of the gizmo shop and you'll be on a elevated platform high up in the second district. There's a broken ladder to the left which you can't use for now but remember this location for later. <clears throat> Go ahead and drop down and you'll be right here by the Dalmatians house. Alright, so back in the 2nd district, there's not very much left to do here now, so go ahead and enter the alleyway in the middle of the 2nd district, and follow it around to the right, and now we gotta level up, putting us up to level 13, or 14. Continue on, and you'll find the door to the 3rd district. Just inside the third district, after clearing out the Heartless, if you look to the left, there will be a vacant house you can enter. Now there's nothing in here yet, however just remember this spot for later because we will be coming back to it. Exit the house and go ahead and head down the uh, stairs. Turn left to enter a wide open area with a bunch of Heartless. If you head to the back of the area of the 3rd district, you'll see that there is a door that's currently closed off with a flame on it. Remember this door for later because we will be coming back there also. Head up the slope beside the door and take note of the blue uh, trinity mark on the, or the blue symbol on the ground. These are known as trinity marks and there's different colored trinity marks in the game 
I'll explain more on these later, and we'll come back for it later. But for now, we're just scoping out the area to get familiar with it, as well as fighting some enemies for some experience and money. The next set of double doors you'll come to is currently closed off. So now that we've explored all three districts in Traverse Town, let's go ahead and head back to the very first district. You're going to have to backtrack from the way you came. So head through the second district if you want. I would highly recommend to kill all the enemies again. Because we're going to want to collect a lot of money to buy some accessories. Also, uh, when you're fighting certain, uh, when you're fighting certain enemies, they'll sometimes drop items that look kind of weird, such as the one we just got, a lucid shard. Any items that you see like that, you might think about selling them. Do not sell them, because what they are are they are synthesis items that you can synthesize to create items and make items on your own later in the game. So all these items that you see, such as lucid shards and stuff like that, do not sell them. The only item you should sell is a pretty stone. Because that's the only item um, that has no other use. Items such as lucid shards, myth mythical shards and stuff like that are used for synthesis. And you can tell which items are used for synthesis if you go to stock and head over to the item that you want to look at. At the bottom, it'll say a mineral shard containing rare metal, used for item synthesis. Anything that says used for item synthesis, you do not want to sell, you want to collect. Because you're probably going to use them to create items in the near future. So before heading back to the first district, let's go ahead and head to the gizmo shop one more time. We're going to clear out the gizmo shop one more time for just a little bit extra money and experience. As you can see, we're already back up to a thousand money, which is very good. Almost 1100. We're going to need all the money we can get. So let's quickly clear out the uh, gizmo shop one more time. Also, make sure you're quick when you're picking up the money because it does disappear pretty quickly. So when you see a lot of money, make sure you run over there and pick it up quick before it disappears.
So after clearing out the gizmo shop, go ahead and head back the way you came and head back to the first district. Alright, now this is the final warning I'm going to give you guys. There is a very tough boss coming up very, very soon. So if you are under level 10, I would highly suggest, or yeah, if you're under level 10, I would highly suggest to level up, use the gizmo shop to level up as much as possible, try to at least get to level 12 just to be safe, <clears throat> because once you enter the accessory shop in the first district, which is where we're going right now, you will not be able to level up anymore in order to fight this boss. You'll be able to level up after you fight the boss. But you won't be able to leave the accessory shop to level up again. So pretty much once you enter this accessory shop, you want to be at whatever level you're planning to fight this boss. Alright, so this is the final warning. Before you enter this accessory shop, if you feel that you are at a low level because this boss is very hard. The first time I fought this boss ever, I got annihilated by him. There was no way to beat him, I thought, because I was at such a low level because I rushed straight through Destiny Islands and Traverse Town. So if you are at a low level and, you're and you want to beat this boss without dying, I would highly suggest to level up now it you do not have to beat this boss in order to continue with the game you can lose and the game still continues but if you do win which is very hard you'll get a special item so if you don't want to bother with leveling up and you really don't care if you beat this boss or if you lose uh, don't worry about it but if you're like me and you want to win even though you can lose this battle and the game still continues um, if you want to win just to win and get that special item, uh, then I would definitely put in the time and effort to level up now. Get to at least level 12. It shouldn't take very long at all if you use the gizmo shop. Um, just run uh, into the gizmo shop, clear out the enemies, then run to the third district, and then run back to the gizmo shop, and all the enemies should be respawned. Keep doing that until you get to level 12 or higher, and that should be enough to take this boss out. So again, once you enter the accessory shop, you will not be able to level up anymore before fighting this boss. You can level up after you fight the boss, but if you're planning on winning and beating this boss, make sure you level up before you enter the accessory shop. Whenever everything's ready, go ahead and enter and make sure to save your game inside here. And I'm gonna pick up where we left off and I'm going to show you that boss battle at the very beginning of the next episode. Make sure that you level up and do what you got to do. And good luck. See you on the next episode of Kingdom Hearts Final Mix.